The Secretary, uh, it's, it's a pleasure seeing you. It's a pleasure knowing that uh, you're in this administration. Um, and, and I mean that quite sincerely. Uh, I'm, I'm often disappointed in this administration. I'm not necessarily in lockstep with all of your opinions, but uh, you and I go back a long way of, of trying to do the right thing. I, uh, I want, first of all, I wanted to get a figure you gave that I may have miswritten. You predicted, you didn't give the, the amount they have today, but you predicted 2,200 gigawatts in China by 2030. Is that accurate? That's what our current uh, estimates are showing. This comes from a number of different sources. But it could be more, it could be less. And, but today, how many gig do they have, what roughly? Let me get back to you. I was actually talking with folks about that yesterday, and I couldn't get it pinned down, but I'll come back to you with a number. Okay, yeah, it would be good for me to have that, because uh, that's a lofty goal. But as you and I know, both know, you go to China, you see a a lot of amazing uh, you know, cranes, but then when you go back, you see the cranes in the same position. So it doesn't always mean that they're doing what they say they're going to do. Um, in 2021, you said that, uh, uh, you told this committee that trusting China and climate change promises would be stupid and malpractice. Uh, without directly using that quote again, would you generally agree that it still would be malpractice? I think trusting a lot of the players who've been involved in this, uh, in government and also private sector, is not the smartest thing in the world because we've been burned. Now, China is a, uh, a country that buys all of the above, no question at all. They buy a massive amount of ours and the rest of the world's coal. They're increasing the, their coal. They're buying natural gas. They're putting in nuclear. And as you said, they're, they're doing uh, some work, considerable work in the photovoltaic that they produce. Um, but India has a tendency to continue burning both dung and coal. Uh, you're going to China, uh, but we had the, uh, the head you know, of, of India here for a joint session just recently. And uh, he said a lot of great things, but he didn't say we're going to buy natural gas or do other incremental things to reduce the carbon footprint. Are we dealing with two problems, a China that it's malpractice to believe that they'll do what they say they'll do, and an India that constantly seems to say they're too poor to do what they should do to do the, any part of climate change reduction? Well, interestingly, Congressman, and thank you for your comments, we have enjoyed working together on a number of things. Um, uh, India is, has set a very lofty goal of trying to uh, deploy 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. That's their goal. <coughs> and if India could succeed in doing that, India would be in compliance with the effort to keep, that would be a 1.5 degree plan. That, that would be really and, and I understand that, Mr. Secretary, but if, if, for example, if India had simply switched its coal production to, uh, to natural gas, they would have reduced more than that amount and they would have done so at a lower cost. So isn't it fair to say that India sets lofty goals like China but w actions speak louder than word so far they're actually- Well, India is deploying. They're deploying, their hope is to deploy and their hope is to close coal. Now they can't afford, they, they don't have LNG uh, and they- Well, they don't have LNG because they haven't built the plants or signed the contract. Well, that is true. But on the other hand, they can't afford to do that on their own. They weren't able to at that point in time. India is growing now, its economy is growing. Uh, the visit here, produce some significant joint initiatives going forward. I am actually going to India uh, before the end of this month uh, to follow up on the conversations we had uh, with, with both the Prime Minister being here, but also before that with some of his other... Okay, uh, and if teams. I can squeeze in one more quick question. Uh, you know, you're going to meet with, uh, in China with a number of, of leaders, but uh, the President called Xi Jinping, called him a dictator. Do you believe he wields the power of a dictator today in China, meaning is his ability to, is similar to Putin's ability to affect what he says he will do such that if he makes a promise, he can keep it? There, there's no question at all that uh, President Xi is the 
major decider uh, of uh, of the direction and of the policies of Is he China. in fact effectively a dictator? Well, I'm not, you know, I don't think it's useful to get into, I don't, I'm not going to get into. But he does uh, wield the power of. A, he wields a enormous power as the as the leader of China, absolutely, and and everybody understands that. But I don't, you know, I, I it doesn't. Do you, do you wish the president had used another word? No, I'm, I don't even. I just, frankly, all of that is sort of like water off the duck's back, and I don't think we ought to get tangled up in, you know, labels and names and whatever. What we ought to do is look at the heart of what we're trying to do. President Biden actually has a very good relationship with President Xi. And President Xi, vice versa, I think he honors the relationship he has with, with President Biden. And I, and I think in Secretary Blinken's visit to China and subsequently in Janet Yellen's visit with China, where you saw in her own statements publicly and assessments, there was frank conversation. But the effort is well underway now to try to stabilize and, and avoid uh, conflict by virtue of unforeseen consequences Mr. or mistakes. Chair, now recognize. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask one follow? It doesn't require, but would you commit when you have had those meetings with India and China to, in writing or in some other way, report back to us so we have an update on the? Sure, be happy to. I thank you, Mr. Secretary. Happy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Issa.